Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Red Dead Redemption 2 Herbalist Challenge Guide. In this guide, I'll be taking you over the quickest and easiest way on how you can complete the Herbalist Challenge in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, before we start with this one, I want to note a couple of things. First of all, at challenge number 9, we're going to be heading into spoiler territory, and I will be giving an additional warning as we are done with challenge number 8 before we head into that. So, until challenge number 8, if you haven't completed the story yet, then you're completely fine uh, with watching the video. After that, if you haven't beaten the story, it's advised not to watch the video any further until you have done so. Another thing as well that I want to mention that before you start doing these challenges, uh, there's a couple of things that you want to note. First of all, Eagle Eye will be your Lord and Savior. By pressing both your sticks at the same time, you will activate Eagle Eye. And if you see a little effect popping up like shown on screen, you'll be able to see where plants are spawning and which ones you can pick up. Another thing which will be an absolute time saver is the Legend of the East Satchel. If you have completed the story, you can easily purchase this from any fence in the world. You have to purchase every single satchel and after that you will be able to purchase the Legends of the East Satchel. If you haven't completed the story yet, then the way to unlock that Legend of the East Satchel is by getting all the other satchels and then you will be able to craft the Legend of the East Satchel as well. It takes a bit of time, but when you have the Legend of the East Satchel, you will have the ability of carrying 99 items, which for one challenge in particular is going to save you a lot of time. Now, if you do have the Legend of the East Satchel, you want to stock up on Yarrow, Burdock, Root, and Current as much as possible. It will save you a lot of time when it's time to complete challenge number 7. Explaining about all that stuff, we'll get to there when we're at challenge seven but this is just one big tip before i wanted to start with challenge number one which requires you to pick up seven yarrow the area i found them the most consistent in is at the oil fields over here very easy to spot they're all over the place typically spawning in groups of uh, three or four uh, very easy to spot it's a red plant not difficult to find at all. Sentence number two requires you to pick and eat four species of berry. Blackberry can be found near the Dakota River right here. Evergreen huckleberry can be found in the swamps area around here. Raspberry can be found in this area near Valentine. And wintergreen berry, which is the most difficult one to spot because it's very tiny, so make sure to use eagle eye for this one, can be found around here. Now make sure that you also actually eat the berries because if you don't, the challenge will not count. Once you get all the berries, you can move on to challenge number three. Challenge number three requires you to craft seven items while using sage as an ingredient. Now, one thing to notice is that the oleander sage does not count for this. Uh, you will have to find these around the map. Uh, the location you can find the most easiest is uh, in this location right here. And the recipe we're going for is going to be needing some burdock root as well, which can be found all over the world, really. You can find it near water, on the grass. It's not difficult to spot. It's a purple plant, and you shouldn't have too much difficulty finding it at all. If you're having some difficulty with it, though, the Dakota River is a very nice location of finding uh, this plant as well. And once you're there and you do have the Legend of the East Satchel, make sure to pick up a couple extra for challenge number seven later down the line. Challenge number four requires you to pick up five mushrooms and feed them to your horse. Uh, obviously make sure to use your menu to feed your horse uh, and select the right mushroom as you're uh, going about that step because if you don't it will not count either. Typically uh, the game I don't know if it does it randomly or whatever, but if you're just simply choosing to feed your horse while standing on your feet, it doesn't really give you an option to choose what exactly you want to feed to the horse. So make sure you select the mushroom before you feed them. It doesn't exactly matter which ones you feed to him. It can be like three different variations of mushroom. It won't really make a difference. Chance number five requires you to craft nine items using Indian tobacco as an ingredient. Now, funny enough, there is a recipe which you can use which only uses Indian tobacco, which is very convenient. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to head down to this location and find yourself some Indian tobacco and simply craft this recipe right here at your campfire. And the best way of going about this one, obviously, is merely drinking it as well, so you don't uh, fill up your entire inventory with that certain medicine if you don't want to. Chance number six requires you to just pick 15 different species of herb. And you can start in the same area as we were using for Indian tobacco, and especially switching between uh, like land and inland and different sorts of environments is a really good idea in order to pick up these 15 species very quickly. The area that you found the Indian tobacco in is already a really good location 
location to get up to about I think five or eight and when you head down to more like Lemoy kind of area where we got the uh, sage for example that's another good location to have a look around and maybe even the swamps for some additional things too and then heading up north you know kind of going around to that location another important thing to notice as well is that her basically means any sort of plant really so that means you can pick up berries or like Indian tobacco it doesn't really matter any type of plant picking that up will count towards this challenge now, challenge number seven requires you to craft and use five special miracle tonics. Now, in order to get the recipe, you can either find this or complete a short walk in a pretty town at the end of chapter three. And then you can buy it at the fence. If you want to find the recipe, however, here is where you're able to find it. It's a little bit difficult to spot, but it's underneath a little wooden box. So it's uh, it requires a little bit of uh, sharp eyes to catch it. But obviously by watching the video, it shouldn't be too difficult at all. Once you've picked up the recipe, make sure that you read the recipe as well in order to learn it. And then you have to find three ingredients and you have to get six of each. You need six yarrow, burdock roots and currants. Now, Yarrow and burdock roots are pretty common around the world. It shouldn't be too difficult finding them. Uh, you just go ahead around the uh, Dakota River and you know you should be able to find burdock root very easily. Yarrow is of course very easily to find around the oil fields area, but current, uh, if you're early game, then it's easy to find them in these locations in Annisburg. A special thank you to uh, Nas and uh, Draconis for pointing that out to me. But if you wanna have an even more easier time, a very good location is around Beatrice Hope, but obviously, this requires you to be a lot further into the story compared to wanting to do this early game. And if you can't really find any current around Annisburg, another good idea is to quickly advance a, a day or two in time and they should respawn again. Uh, just simply set up camp and you should be good to go again. This one takes a while to get and having a uh, increased uh, ingredient satchel is a very good idea to have because it will save you a bunch of time. Especially the Legends of the East satchel is a blessing in this disguise for this one because you're going to need to pick a total of 90 plants which means that you need a 30 of each ingredient so this one might take a little while to get but once you've done that, you can move on to challenge number eight, which requires you to use Oleander Sage to craft six poison weapons. Now you can find the recipe for a poison throwing knife at the fence, and all you need for that really is some Oleander Sage and also a throwing knife, and you can craft these six poison throwing knives very quickly and very easily. Oleander Sage can be found in the location that is shown on screen, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find at all. Challenge number nine is the start of the spoiler section of this guide. So if you haven't completed the story just yet, please turn away now and come back until you have done so. Challenge number nine requires you to get all 43 plants within the game. And uh, now instead of me trying to stretch this out as long as possible and try to reach a certain quota, I'm going to do something that I personally find is the best idea to go about this. On your screen right now, you're seeing a little map and two areas where you can find a bunch of these plants. The other ones, however, are a bit more spread around the world. So I've left the link in my description down below that will guide you to a page which literally has a screen of the location and how the plant looks like that you're looking for. That way it's much easier to find these 43 plants rather than constantly having to refer back to a video for it, which I personally found. I've hand tested all these locations. I've used them as I was trying to complete this challenge myself and I can personally guarantee this is a very solid uh, page to use, especially if you're missing one or two. And it's especially handy that you copy and paste the uh, list that is on that page so you can cross off every single herb that you already got. Also make sure to manually save regularly just in case the power goes out or something and you don't know where you left out of. Manual saves are a godsend in this game. They are very very useful. Challenge number 10 we cry you to season and cook all 11 types of meats. Now this one isn't that difficult especially if you've been kind of playing the game normally you should already have the majority of this meat. However if you haven't let me just help you with that as well. Uh, first of all in order to season the meat what you need to do is before you cook it you need to use your d-pad left or right in order to actually select the herb that you want to be cooking your meat with. There's three different herbs you can use in order to season your meat which are wild mint, oregano, 
or creeping time. Either of those will do, it doesn't matter which one you use, just use any and you will be fine. Now luckily you only have to go out to the world in order to search 8 of them, because a total of 3 is already being sold by the butcher, which is venison, pork and prime beef. You can easily purchase all 3 of those for a total of 15 or 16 dollars at the butcher, and then just season those 3 and you'll be done with those already. An exotic bird, uh, personally what I found easiest to do is to search for a pelican, which can be easily found around the east side of Blackwater. Uh, they're pretty wide animals, it should be easy to spot them flying around if they are. If you want to get plump bird meat, you need to get either a turkey, goose or a chicken. Big game, the easiest one to go for that one would be gators, you can find them all over the place in the swamps. Succulent fish meat is any sort of small fish. Flanky fish meat is big fish meat. Game meat is basically any bird. Crustacean meat is from crabs, which you can find over here. They can be a little bit difficult to spot, however, this is literally the only location that they can spawn so if you see one of those little creatures uh, crawling around uh, make sure to use a small caliber bullet or else uh you're gonna have to find a new one. And another thing to note as well is that if you killed one and picked one up, you have to break it down in order to be able to start cooking it. Be careful that you don't immediately go over to cooking it, because if you do so, you will not have the option to season it. So break down the crap, then go to your menu to season it, and then cook it. I personally made this mistake, and I had to go search for another crab, which would be a waste of time. And the mutton meats can be acquired from sheep, goats, and rams, which you can very easily find in this area right here. And then once you've finally cooked all the meat with some herb attached to it, you have finally completed all the herbalist challenge, and you will be the proud owner of some new reinforced gear, which you can pick up at the trapper for completing challenge 1, 3, 7, and 10. And that brings us to the end of this herbalist challenge's guide. If you find this useful, make sure to leave it a like, and check out all the other challenge guides that I have done in the playlist at linked at the end of the video. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.